the next slide shows different types of fluorescent microscopy. Now we'll discuss all these types one by one in detail. Direct epifluorescent filter technique. This is a microbiological method used to estimate the total number of microbial cells in a water sample or any other sample, particularly bacteria and other microorganisms. Direct epifluorescent filter technique relies on the use of specific fluorescent dyes or stains to visualize and count the cells under a fluorescence microscope. Now let us discuss what is its principle. Sample collection. A water sample is collected from a natural water source such as a river, lake or wastewater treatment plant. Filtering. A known volume of the water sample is passed through a filter membrane. The filter typically has a pore size that captures microorganisms while allowing other particulate matters to pass through, as you can see here in the diagram. Staining. The filter with trapped microorganisms is stained with a fluorescent dye that binds specifically to nucleic acids, DNA or RNA within the cells. Common fluorescent dyes include DAPI or acridin orange. Microscopy. The stained filter is placed on a glass slide and observed under a fluorescence microscope equipped with the appropriate filters for the selected dye. The microscope is typically equipped with epifluorescence illumination which excites the fluorophores in the stained cells. Image capture. Microbial cells on the filter emit fluorescent light when exposed to the excitation wavelength of the dye. The microscope captures images of the fluorescently labeled cells. Cell counting. Using image analysis software, the number of the fluorescent cell in multiple fields of view is counted. The software calculates the total number of cells per unit volume of the original water sample. Advantages and limitations of direct epifluorescent filter technique. Advantages. It is a rapid and relatively simple technique for estimating total microbial cell counts in water samples. It allows for the visualization and counting of viable and non-viable cells. The use of fluorescent stains enhances the contrast between cells and background particles. Limitations. It does not provide species level identification of microorganisms. It only estimates total cell counts. The technique requires a specialized equipment including a fluorescence microscope and image analysis software. Interpretation of results can be subjective and dependent on the skills of the microscopist. Coming to the next type. Total Internal Reflection Fluorescence Microscopy, also known as TERF Microscopy. It is a specialized fluorescence microscopy technique that provides high resolution imaging of structures and events occurring at or near the surface of a specimen such as the cell membrane. TERF Microscopy achieved this by exploiting the principle of total internal reflection which occurs when light is incident on an interface between two media at an angle greater than the critical angle leading to internal reflection rather than refraction as you can see here in the diagram. Here theta c shows the critical angle and when the incident light is given at this critical angle the rays reflect back into the medium and do not show any refraction. This phenomena creates a vanescent wave that penetrates only a few hundred nanometers into the specimen as when we can see the comparison between the two images. The first image is when there is a normal incident ray. The entire sample shows the fluorescence as you can see here the green dots. Whereas in the second image when the critical angle is given only the molecules close to the surface are showing fluorescence. The vanescent wave is composed of electromagnetic fields that decay exponentially with distance from the interface. In turf microscopy, only fluorophores in the immediate vicinity of the surface are excited by the vanescent wave. It is used to visualize events like cell adhesion, vesicle trafficking and protein interactions at the cell membrane. Immunofluorescence microscopy it is a technique that combines the principles of fluorescence microscopy with the specificity of immunological reactions. It allows researchers to visualize and localize specific proteins or antigens within cells and tissues using fluorescently labeled antibodies. 
immunofluorescence microscopy is used to map the spatial distribution and expression levels of target molecules in cells and tissues. The method takes advantage of highly specific binding of antibodies to proteins. Antibodies are raised to the protein of interest and labeled with a fluorescent probe, direct immunofluorescence as you can see in the first diagram. This probe is then used to label the protein of interest in the cell and can be imaged using fluorescence microscopy. In practice, cells are usually labeled using indirect immunofluorescence as you can see here in the diagram. Here the antibody to the protein of interest that is primary antibody is further labeled with a second antibody carrying the fluorescent tag that is secondary antibody. Such a protocol gives a higher fluorescence signal than using a single fluorescently labeled antibody. Photoactivation microscopy. Photoactivation involves using a flash of short wavelength light to induce a change in the fluorescence properties of a fluorophore, such as converting it from a non fluorescent state to a fluorescent state. Photoactivation is often used to track the movement and dynamics of individual molecules or structures within a sample. It allows researchers to selectively label and visualize specific molecules, providing insights into their behavior and interactions. Photoactivatable fluorescent proteins can be used to track the movement of single molecules or specific regions within the cells, example PA, GFP. The diagram here shows a simple photoactivation where the CFP that is a fluorescent molecule is excited with a blue light of 430 nanometer and gives an emission of 490 nanometer with green color. Fluorescence resonance energy transfer that is FRET microscopy. It relies on the transfer of energy between two fluorophores where one fluorophore that is donor transfers its energy to another nearby fluorophore known as acceptor. FRET occurs when the emission spectrum of the donor fluorophore overlaps with the absorption spectrum of the acceptor fluorophore. When the donor is excited by light that is donor excitation, it can transfer its excitation energy to the acceptor fluorophore if they are close to enough. Usually the distance should be less than 6 nanometers. Common FRET pairs include cyan fluorescent proteins denoted by CFP as the donor and yellow fluorescent protein denoted by YFP acting as the acceptor. As you can see here in the diagram, when this CFP and YFP are at a distance more than 6 nanometer, there is no transfer of energy and the molecule CFP upon excitation shows a normal photoactivation reaction. Whereas when the distance is less than 6 nanometer, the CFP emits light that causes excitation of YFP and then finally VIFP emits a 530 nanometer light showing red fluorescence. FRET can be used to study protein-protein interactions. It reveals interactions between proteins by tagging them with donor and acceptor fluorophores. Conformational changes. It monitors changes in protein conformation or movement by attaching fluorophores to different regions of the protein. Molecular dynamics. It tracks molecular movements in real time such as DNA unwinding, RNA folding and protein translocation. Cellular signaling. It is used to study intracellular signaling events such as changes in calcium concentration or membrane potential. Nanometer scale distance measurements. It determines distances between molecules at the nanometer scale providing insights into molecular structure. Fluorescence lifetime imaging that is FLIM microscopy. It is an advanced fluorescence microscopy technique that provides information about the fluorescence decay rate or fluorescence lifetime of multiple fluorophores. Fluorescence lifetime is the average time a fluorophore spends in the excited state before emitting a photon or returning to the ground state. FLIM measures the fluorescence decay curve which represents the rate of photon emission over time after excitation. Fluorescence lifetime is influenced by factors like local microenvironment, molecular interactions and energy transfer processes. FLIM is particularly useful for studying molecular interactions. 
Flip FLIFRET in combination enables to directly measure molecular interactions like protein-protein, protein-DNA, protein-RNA and receptor ligand interactions and changes in proximity between biomolecules. Protein Dynamics FLIM can monitor changes in fluorescence lifetime due to protein conformational alterations. It aids in studying protein folding, unfolding and structural changes. Microenvironment changes in biological samples. pH sensitive fluorophores undergo changes in fluorescence lifetime in response to changes in pH. As pH changes, the microenvironment around the fluorophore affects its fluorescence decay rate, that is, lifetime. Here you can see a fluorescence decay curve in which fluorescence can be seen decreasing with increase in time. Fluorescence recovery after photobleaching, that is FRAP microscopy. FRAP uses the highlight flux from a laser to locally destroy fluorophores, labeling the macromolecule to create a bleached zone known as photobleaching. The observation and recording of the subsequent movement of undamaged or unbleached fluorophores into the bleached zones give a measure of molecular mobility. Here you can see in the diagram the first that is a pre-bleach area where the fluorophore is giving a complete signal. After photobleaching, there is a decrease in the fluorescence intensity and after some time we can see there is a regain in the intensity of the fluorescence which shows that there is a movement of undamaged or unbleached fluorophores into this bleached zone which gives a measure of molecular mobility. FRAP is widely used technique in fluorescence microscopy that provides insight into the protein diffusion and mobility. FRAP can reveal the movement and diffusion of proteins within cellular compartments providing information about their interactions with other molecules. Dynamics of membrane lipids and proteins FRAP plays a significant role in elucidating the dynamic properties of the fluid mosaic membrane model. FRAP measures the lateral diffusion of lipids within the lipid layer of the membrane and lateral mobility of membrane proteins, revealing their ability to move within the lipid bilayer. Fluorescence in situ hybridization microscopy. Fish probes are single-stranded DNA or RNA molecules with sequences that complement the target DNA region of interest. The probes are labeled with fluorescent dyes that emit light of specific wavelengths when excited by appropriate light source. The labeled probes hybridize to the complementary target sequences as you can see in the diagram allowing the specific localization and visualization of these sequences. Many different probes can be labeled with different fluorochromes in the same preparation. Chromosome mapping Fish can precisely identify the locations of specific genes, chromosomal regions, or entire chromosomes within the nucleus. Gene expression analysis Fish can determine the expression levels of specific genes in cells and tissues. Genomic rearrangements and aberrations Fish is used to detect genetic abnormalities such as chromosomal translocations, deletions, and duplications in cancers and genetic disorders. Cancer diagnosis and prognosis Fish is used to detect specific oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes associated with various cancers. Flow cytometry the integration of flow cytometry and fluorescence microscopy offers a powerful approach of to studying cells and cellular components in greater detail. Flow cytometry is a technique used to analyze and sort individual cells or particles in a heterogeneous population based on their fluorescence and light scattering properties. Flow cytometry can rapidly analyze large population of cells and identify subpopulations based on their fluorescence profiles as you can see here in the diagram. It provides quantitative data about cell population in terms of size, complexity and fluorescence intensity. Once subpopulations of interest are identified using flow cytometry, individual cells from these subpopulations can be isolated and further analyzed using fluorescence microscopy to study specific cellular features or behaviors. For example, to visualize the precise localization of labeled molecules within cells, providing insights into subcellular structures and interactions. 
So now let us discuss applications of fluorescent microscopy. Fluorescence microscopy is a powerful imaging technique that utilizes fluorescent molecules that is fluorophores to visualize and study various biological, chemical and physical processes. Its ability to provide high resolution and specific information about the distribution, localization and dynamics of molecules and structures makes it invaluable for a wide range of applications. Here are some key applications of fluorescence microscopy. Cellular and subcellular imaging. Visualizing cell structures, organelles and membranes. Studying cellular processes such as endocytosis, exocytosis and intracellular trafficking. Monitoring changes in organelle morphology and dynamics. Protein localization and dynamics. Tracking the movement and distribution of proteins within cells. Studying protein-protein interactions and complex formation. Observing protein translocation and trafficking. Live cell imaging. Monitoring dynamic processes in real time without disturbing cellular function. Studying cell migration, division and response to external stimuli. Analyzing changes in cell behavior over time. Gene expression analysis, visualizing the expression and localization of specific genes in cells and tissues, studying the spatial and temporal patterns of gene expression during development and disease, single molecule imaging, observing individual molecules or particles in real time, studying molecular dynamics, interactions and behavior at the single molecule level. Multicolor imaging and colocalization studies, simultaneously imaging multiple targets labeled with different fluorophores, analyzing the spatial relationship and colocalization of different molecules, pharmacological and drug studies, assessing the effects of drug on cellular processes and dynamics, monitoring drug uptake, localization and interactions within cells, neurobiology, Visualizing neuronal structures, synapses and axonal transport, studying neuronal development, plasticity and degradation. So by far we have discussed the principles working of fluorescence microscopy, specimen preparation, different type of fluorescent molecules and different types of fluorescent microscopy along with applications. In the next session we will discuss in detail about electron microscopy. Thank you for watching. For any query, you can contact me through the given email ID.